watch with malice. I am your host, the witch. Shred Malice. I'm here to guide you through the scary, the spooky, the kooky, the ridiculous, and the utterly sublime. And that's just the stores having Christmas stuff out in November. Right, kids? Now, I hope you all had a good Halloween a couple of weeks ago. Hope you got up to all sorts of spooky stuff. Personally, I hosted a Halloween wrestling show. And I even won the rumble at the end of the night. They never saw it coming. <laughs> But enough of the past, let's talk about now! What have we got for you today, group? Well, ha, uh, for one night only I'll be switching my amazing witch's hat for a red belly. That's right. There we go. For tonight, we are joining the world of the Beatnik. They're sort of a cousin to the filthy hippie. We are going to be watching Roger Corman's film Buckets of Blood. Made in 1959 and starring Dick Miller. That's right, the guy from Gremlins. Dick Miller stars as a busboy in a beatnik cafe where the patrons regularly condescend and look down on him. Just because he's in the service industry. Just because he maybe isn't as bright as the others. Ooh, but maybe, just maybe, they'll get what's coming to them. <laughs> and later on, we'll be paying another visit to my disgusting hippie of a cousin, Moondog Malice, to see what he thinks of the film. So until then, let's bring it on. I will talk to you alone, for there is nothing else to talk about, for there is nothing else. Life is an obscure hobo bumming a ride on the omnibus of art. Burn gas buggies and whip your sour cream of circumstance and hope. And go ahead and sleep your bloody heads off. Creation is. All else is not. What is not creation is Graham Cracker. Let it all crumble to feed the creator. The artist is. All others are not. A canvas is a canvas. Or a painting. A rock is a rock. Or a statue. A sound is a sound. Or is music. A creature is a creature, or an artist. Where are John, Joe, Jake, Jim, Jerk? Dead, dead, dead. They were not born before they were born. They were not born. Where are Leonardo, Rembrandt, Ludwig, alive? Alive, alive, they were born. Bring on the multitude with a multitude of fishes. Feed them to the fishes for liver oil. To nourish the artist. Stretch their skins upon an easel to give him canvas. Crush their bones into a paste that he might mold them. Let them die. And by their miserable deaths become the clay within his hands, that he might form an ashtray or an ark. For all that is comes through the eye of the artist. The rest are blind fish swimming in the cave of aloneness. Swim on, you maudlin, muddling, maddened fool. One bright and sunny night, some artist will bait a hook and let you bite upon it. Bite hard and die. In his stomach, you are very close to immortality. Waller, what are you doing here? 
I was looking at Carla's picture. Why, I pay you to look at pictures? Oh, get to work. I was just looking. There are empty cups all over the place. Clear them out. You shouldn't be so rough on him, Lenny. Hey, say, Walter. Hi. Oh, good. Yes, man, how you making? Fine, man, how about you? In and out. Valdez Vice. Yeah, LaCroix checking in. Lou took over a couple of minutes ago. Anything new at the door? Well, nothing you can pound nails in. A couple of hustlers. One of them short, fat, brunette, named Skinny. The other one was short also. She was bleached and skinny. Name of fat? Probably. They didn't get it. They didn't give any pictures, though. Guess you can keep an eye on them. Okay. Any heads? Well, Jerry Sachs looked like he was straight. I'm sure he's on it anyway. Didn't see any pushes around the place. Lou said he'd check out on Jerry. He'll sound him out later if he gets any higher. I guess that's about it. Okay, uh, go on home and get a good night's sleep, you think. Okay, so long. Everyone listen to my new poem. Do you think they really heard it? I heard it, Mr. Brock. Thank you, Walter. I'm sure you did. Bring on the multitude with a multitude of fishes. Feed them to the fishes for liver oil to nourish the artist. That was word for word. Yes, it? I've forgotten. You mean you don't remember your own poem? I refuse to say anything twice. Repetition is death. I don't get it. When you repeat something, you are reliving a moment, wasting it, severing it from the other end of your life. I believe only in new impressions, new stimuli, new life. I thought you believed that life is an obscure hobo bumming a ride on a... I do believe that, Walter, but I also believe creative living. To be uncreative, you might as well be in your grave. Or in the army. They tried to draft me once. I couldn't pass the test. <laughs> Walter, Lennon's looking at you. He's just about gone. Walter has a clear mind. One day something will enter it, feel lonely, and leave again. Yeah. <laughs> Too much. Yes, cats, yes. If you want to know how beatniks live, William and me will show you. We'll introduce you to some wild ones. <laughs> You may even discover an artist of your own. And how much is that going to cost us? What cost? A couple of bucks. You want to meet some beatniks, don't you? Oh, no, it's the artist. I'm just crazy about artists. All that is comes through the eye of the artist. The rest are just blind fish swimming in a cave of aloneness. Oh, you must be an artist. And working as a busboy, too. Feed him that he will be satisfied. The artist is. All others are not. That's most intriguing. Are you a painter? Well, well no, I, I work... I'm working on something that's not ready yet. What is it, man? Finger painting? Uh, draw me a picture of a house, Walter. Make some smoke coming out of the chimney. Well, I am working on something. I'll show you soon. Walter? Uh, is he? tonight. I had a salami sandwich, Mrs. Swicker. Oh, if you were my son, why don't you let me fix you a nice bowl of soup? Won't take but a minute. Well, it's okay. I, I can fix myself something. Besides, I got something important to do. Oh, oh, say, Walter, did you see anything of Frankie tonight when you went out? I didn't see him at all. 
But, well, if you do, tell him I got a nice, fresh piece of halibut for him. Tell him that? I mean, do you think he'll understand? He's only a cat. Oh, good night, Walter. Canvas is a canvas or a painting. A rock is a rock or a statue. A sound is a sound or it's music. What's the matter, Frankie? How'd you get yourself stuck in a wall? <laughs> Wait a minute, I'll get you out. Fresh piece of halibut for you. I'll give you two of in the morning. Repetition is death, Frankie.
let them die, and by their miserable deaths become the clay within his hands that he might form an ashtray or an ark. Pray that you might be his diadem, gold, glory, paint, clay, that he might take you in his magic hands and wring from your marrow wonders. We're a John Joe Jim jerk. It's a thing I made. Walter. You like it? What's he got? Oh, come look at this, Leonard. Well, where'd you get that, auction? I made it. You made that? I said I did, didn't I? Walter, it's very good. Honest? Honest. What's it called? Dead Cat? Dead Cat? That's its name? Sure. Well, it sure looks dead enough. You you want to buy it? Buy it? That thing? Scare people out of the place. Don't be silly. It's tremendous. Look at the detail. The anatomy is perfect. Look at the expression on its face. How come you put a knife into it? I didn't mean to. Just got carried away, huh? Well, all right. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put it in the corner of the alcove. If it sells, we'll split 50-50, okay? Sure. Does this mean I'm an artist? Maybe so. You can do other things as well. well all that is comes through the eye of the artist. Yeah, you're a real artist now. I go in back and scrub down those garbage cans. Much now. You really like it? We like it. Now go on. Did you see my cat? What's the matter? You losing? How do you like my cat? You make this thing mad? Uh-huh. It's crazy. Crazy. You wanna buy it? For me, Matt? I'm tapped. Likes my cat. Get to work. Hey, hey, Waller. Come here a minute. Hey, congratulations, man. Walter, you're famous. I saw your cat. Did you like it, Mr. Brock? You may call me Maxwell. Now, how'd you do it, Walter? All right. Just took some clay and fixed it up. <laughs> Attention. Attention, everyone. As you pass through these yellow portals, I am sure you noticed on your right a small clay figure. And assume this transfixed effigy to be the work of a master sculptor. And indeed, so it is. That master sculptor is in our midst. He is none other than Walter Paisley, our very own busboy whose hands of genius have been carrying away the empty cups of your frustrations. Mark well this lad. His is the silent voice of creation. Within the dark, rich soil of humility, he blossoms as the hope of our nearly sterile century. Uh, beautiful, beautiful, Maxwell. Bring me an espresso, Walter. Hey, Maxwell, really beautiful. Thank you. Man, you are in. Oh, Walter, it yes, was wonderful. Yes, then, the cat's cut. cut. Yes. This is my man. Took of every... Yes, yes. Listen, man, you got a pen? Huh? This is my man. Hey, Pops, what's happening? Making a big scene for Walter. Who'd he shoot? 
He made a cat. Out of clay. See you around. Yeah, later. They all like my cat. Yeah, very good. Now, look, Walter, you must be tired. Why don't you take the rest of the night off? Huh? No, I don't no, 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 you got it coming. Besides, you're creating an incident. When people are applauding, they don't order coffee. So go on home and work on something. Make another cat. Well, I haven't got another cat. Well, just go to the movies. Please, Walter, go. All right, Mr. DeSantis. Good night. Good night, Walter. Walter? Walter, wait a minute. Oh, hello, Naolia. Walter, I dug it. My cat? It was the most wonderful, wildest, like, wickiest thing I've ever seen. Walter, you've done something to me. Something deep down inside of my prana. I have? Oh, Walter, I want to be with you. You're creative. You've got a hot light bulb glowing inside of you. And I want to be warm by it. Gee, that's nice of you, Naolia. Walter, take me away from here. Take me away to some cool blue place. And gas me. I can't. I gotta go home. Oh, then I'll go home with you. Oh, no, Mrs. Swicked wouldn't like that. She's my landlady. Isn't there anything I can do for you? I don't think so, Naolia. Oh, Walter, I can't let you just split like this. I've got to do something. I've got to contribute. You don't have to do anything. Wait. Wait, there is one thing I can do. One little thing. Don't leave, Walter. I want to give you something. Something that'll make you remember me. Put it in your pocket. Now go, Walter. Don't look back. Just go. who wants to share a very special composition with you. Take it away, Moondog. Jack and Jill, they went up the hill. But why? Why did they not go to the valley for the water? Why would a well be up a hill? Because the valley is the depths of their soul. But the hill is the human experience. And at the top of this hill is a will. And the bell is capitalism. And who is the vote for? It's not for them. They're merely the pawns. They are the working man, the working woman. Their soul is cold. Their skin is hard. It's hard going up the hill. And then they finally get to the bell. And they pull up the pail of water. There's no water there. All they have is a bucket of blood. Darry. Can I 
have your autograph, Mr. Paisley? Why, certainly, my good woman. Everybody likes my cat. You want to buy my statue, mister? Ten thousand dollars? Okay. Gee, I'll be famous. And then I can ask Carla and she'll say, yes, I knew she will. I've seen you down the yellow door plenty. Come on in. I, I was just making some pancakes. You can have some if you like. Did you see my cat? Yeah, I saw your cat. I also saw that chick lay these on you. Oh, that was Naolia. She's a nice girl. She's kind of strange, though. I guess she figures I get headaches or something. Okay, Walter, who's your connection? Connection? Yeah, connection. Who do you score from? Where do you buy your horse? Horse? Horse, junk, white stuff, heroin. Is that what that is? I've never seen any of that before. I always thought that was expensive. Yeah, Walter, that can be real expensive. Gee. Well, wasn't that nice in Naolia to give me that expensive horse? Walter. Huh? Police officer. Ooh. You're like an undercover man. You're under arrest, Walter. Under arrest for what? Possession of narcotics. For me? What are you talking about? Walter, I got you cold. Now, you just come along quietly. I didn't do nothing. And they only had give me those. I didn't ask her for it. Oh, I didn't even know what was in right. that. All right, you can tell them that downtown. Now, let's go. I ain't going no place with you. Walter, do I have to point this at you? You're going to shoot me. No, don't shoot Walter, me. Walter, just relax. No, you're going to shoot now, me. just relax. No, don't shoot just me. Just shut up, Walter. No, you're going to shoot me. Don't shoot me. <laughs> Mrs. Swickett, what noise? Don't tell me I didn't hear a racket. Are you sure you're all alone? Uh, I'm always alone, Mrs. Swickett. Yeah. Walter, have you been talking to yourself again? Well, I, I guess maybe I have, Mrs. Swickett. Somebody's got to. Walter, you know, what you need is a girl. But she doesn't have to be pretty. Just so long as she takes good care of you. Well, I can take real good care of myself, Mrs. Swickett. Yeah, I can see that. Look at this pad. It's terrible. Why did you ever clean it up? And when did you change these sheets last? They look like they're alive. Uh, Mrs. And, Swicket, uh, I gotta meet some friends in a little while, and I gotta take a shower. Well, well, why don't you clean up this stuff? Oh, please, What's Mrs. Swicket. But if you'd have shot me, you'd be mopping up my blood now. I can't help it if I got scared and hit you. I didn't mean it. It's crazy. It's crazy. I didn't know you had it in you, Walter. How'd you do it? Well, I just took some clay and fixed it up. Go home and make something, Walter. Make another cat. But I haven't got another cat. Well, I reported in here around midnight. Lou had already been gone over an hour. No, nobody seems to know where he went. Why don't you put an alert out on him and I'll check on him from here. Okay, right.
dark complexion, hair black and curly. Last seen wearing blue jeans and gray sweater. Tim Evans was a murderer all in his prison cell. And those who read about his crimes, they damned his soul to hell, saying, go down, you murderer, go down. For the murder of his own true wife and the killing of his own child, the jury found him guilty and the hanging judge, he smiled. And dig the fuzz. Well, what do you suppose they wanted? You, man, you. Hey, maybe they're looking for old Walter. He's a criminal type. Ain't you, Walter? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. DeSantis. Oh, that's all right, Walter. Sit down. Mm -hmm. Sit down. Greetings, man. I'm not supposed to sit with the customers. We? Now, why shouldn't you sit at the table, Walter? After all, you're a big artist now. A true creator above mere mortal. What's the big idea? Idea? I was just telling Walter the truth. Man wanted to pay me $100 for the cat. In fact, he's taking it home to show to his wife. Proves that I underestimated Walter's ability. His work has enormous realism. You can hardly tell it from the real thing. Well, that sounds like a real put down. Get off Walter's back, Leonard. Am I on his back? You're not very funny. I'm not trying to be. Walter, what are you going to make next? A dog, maybe. Or a bird. How about a few dozen cockroaches from your room? Hey, man, why don't you make an elephant? I, I got a new one. Great. What is it? It's a full-length, life-size figure. Crazy. What is it called? A uh, murdered man. When do we get to see it? Oh, any time. Hey, that's a pretty far out name for a statue. I saw a statue once. It was called the third time Phyllis saw me, she exploded. Well, what kind of a statue was that? I don't know. It was made out of driftwood and dipped in fluoric acid. Very wild. <coughs> What's wrong, Leonard? Nothing. Nothing at all. It's the food in this dump. Oh, man, you should try the sorrel sewer. They got wheat germ bagels. Too much. Excuse me, please. I think he really is sick. So who isn't? Santos! Well, I've been trying to get to you all evening. You gotta make a call. Gotta call Lieutenant Valdez. Listen, I was wrong about my wife. She wants that cat after all. Do you hear me? I'll give you that hundred dollars for the cat. I can't talk to you just now. All right, then, two hundred. No. No! Three hundred dollars and that's tops. Three hundred dollars for the cat? <laughs> I know I'm going out of my mind, but I've been collecting art pieces all over Europe for years. And this boy, Walter Paisley, has got it. I want to buy his first work. And to make very sure that I get it, I'll pay you five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars for the cat and a first look at his next stuff. Someone has the cat just now, but I'll have him back in a few days. Then you can have it for the $500. Oh, thank you, sir. I think I've made a bargain. Call me when you're ready. Good night. Larry, you feel better? Listen, I'm going over to Walter's later after the place closes to see Murdered Man. You feel up to coming along? The rope was fixed around his neck and a washer behind his ear. And the prison bell was tolling, but Tim Evans didn't hear. Saying, go down, you murderer, go down. Look at the size of it. Well, it's, it's not really that big. I got it on kind of a stand. Well, let's see it. I'm a little nervous. I, I never did a person before. You can do anything if you set your mind to it. It's hot in here. You want me to open a window? Oh, come on, Walter. Take off the sheet.
Don't you like it? Walter, it's a masterpiece. I've never seen anything like it before. And I hope I never see anything like it again. <laughs> Neither do I. It's hideous. And it's eloquent. It expresses the modern man and all his self-pity. How did you ever find that in yourself, Walter? Well, it, it wasn't easy. What's the matter with you? Nothing. Nothing at all. I've never seen anyone so squeamish. What's your opinion, Leonard? Don't ask me. Oh, come on. Now, even you must see its value. Do you think that you or I could have conceived of such a thing, much less executed it? Well, then admit it. It's a work of genius. I admit it. Then let's take it down to the yellow door. No. Why not? I'll tell you. But you, you cover it up again, please, huh? Please. Thank you. What is all this nonsense? Why do you want to hide it? Well, I've been thinking. I, I didn't realize how much talent Walter actually had. It would be wrong to show his pieces one at a time. Dead wrong. You're right. He should build a collection first. Yeah. That's the idea. Maybe when it's big enough, we can have a show. A show? Yeah. Uh, just for me? No. Well, not exactly. I mean, you, you take years and years. It's getting hot again. Well, it would take you years to make that many statues, but your work would be featured. It's a wonderful idea, Walter. It's the only way to gain recognition. All the big art critics and art dealers will be there. It'll be an event. Yes, then we can unload and sell this stuff for a lot more. But the show, uh, how soon can we go? Well, don't rush things. It takes time. But first of all, you've got to stop making these horrible statues. Carla and I will guide you. Maybe you can turn to freeform. Freeform? Well, that's the movement today. With his talent for realism? But you can see the direction his realism takes. It's unhealthy. But, but you said I was a genius. I, I don't want to be a busboy anymore. Yes, maybe you got a point there. You shouldn't keep working at the yellow door. Look, I'm sure that man is going to buy your dead cat. So here, here's your fee in advance. $50. And if you need more, I've got it, so don't worry. I've got great faith in you, Walter. <laughs> Gee, $50 for something I made. Now you're a professional. Let's go. OK. Good night, Walter. Keep up the good work. Yeah, but don't rush things. You've got all the time in the world. Come on, Carla. Good night. One of the greatest advances in modern poetry is the elimination of cleric. I am proud to say my poetry is only understood by that minority which is aware. Aware of what? Why not of anything stupid, just aware? Man, this place is beginning to feel like a lineup. Yeah, baby. But don't cool out pretty soon, I'm gonna haunt somebody else's joint. We may have to start drinking. <laughs> Yes, man. Yes. Yes. That's my man. Yes. Yes, man. Yes. Good evening, Walter. Good evening, Paula. Sylvia, didn't you see me wave my Zen stick? Oh, it's Walter Paisley. You bring me a cappuccino and a piece of papaya cheesecake. And, and a bottle of Yugoslavian white wine. Yes, sir, Mr. Paisley. Good evening, Walter. Maxwell, how have you been? 
I see the rewards of achievement have come your way. Well, after all, I'm a successful sculptor now. Indeed. Hey, man, dig Walter the Wigger. He's coming out like he just cured cats. Let us make the scene. Crazy. I was just suggesting to Walter that he try his hand at freeform. Why do you suggest anything to Walter? Are you the spokesman for society come to put your stifling finger in his eye? Good evening, gentlemen. Oh, well, now, who invited these two down from the clouds? Maxwell, you who? Clear the table. Bring a bowl. I may be sick. It's Alice the Awful. Comes to spread cheer and the color. Look at my sun hat, everybody. Do we have to? Where have you been, Alice? I went up to Big Sur to look for Henry Miller. You didn't find him, I hope. No, he's in Europe. Good. Why is the bus boy sitting here? I'm not the bus boy anymore. That's right. Walter has become a sculptor. Oh, really? I'm a model, you know. I only charge $25 an hour. Would you like to do me? I just might. Never mind that. Walter's gonna try free form. There you go again. I may take my business to the sorrel sewer. As a matter of fact, I was going to suggest to Walter that he try a female figure. As a change from the violent death theme. He really should, Walter. You know what? If you like, I'll be your model for free. I couldn't. Not you. Man, if you're gonna be an artist, you've gotta do nudes. Nudes. Right, right, right. Ain't nobody an artist unless he does nudes. Will you get them out of here before we wind up in night court? Oh, let's change the subject. I'm sick of hearing about sculpture. Nobody knows how to do that anymore. Much less the busboy from the yellow door. Who do you think you're talking about? Don't shout at me. I don't like you. <laughs> Nobody asked for your opinion, Walter. You're just a simple little farm boy, and the rest of us are all sophisticated beatniks. That's all, man. Let's split. Yeah, man. I gotta make me some air. See, you, you made them leave. What did I do? The first beneficial service of your benighted life. It proves we're all good for something. Are you saying that this best boy is better than I? Yes. I think this whole bit about him being a sculptor is just a big put-on for my benefit. That's not true. I am a sculptor. Oh, yeah? Prove it. Make something out of this. There. Hand. <laughs> that isn't a real hand. If you were a sculptor, you'd create something for me. A harpoon would be very nice. I'm going home. Alice? You're obnoxious. But he's such an idiot. Wow! What a really obnoxious woman! Ugh, I cannot stand her. But one thing I found very interesting was the really snobby poet guy. His very pretentious assertion that the only people who actually understand his poetry are those that are aware. <laughs> and I have to agree with that. Sometimes. Just sometimes, when the witch Shred Malice comes out to a wrestling match, some fools in the audience boo him. Why? I'm your lovable witch horror host. Obviously, they're just not aware yet. Idiots. <laughs> anyway, I want to find out if anything bad happens to that horrible woman, so let's get back to the film. <laughs> I wanted to apologize for being nasty to you this evening. So you're apologized. Good night. Listen, Torp, why don't you get out of here and let me go to bed? I didn't finish talking to you. I decided to make that female figure after all. Oh? And I'd like you to pose for it. Remember what I said about my price? 
$25 an hour. If you want to pay it, I don't mind posing. When do you want to start work? Tonight. You mean right now? Uh-huh. Wait till I get my sweater. heat around this place. It's bad for the clay. You'll get used to it. Well, I'm almost ready. Here. Sit in this chair and I'll pose you. like very much clay. Oh, it's enough. Put this around your neck. Are these fertile eggs? Are these eggs fertile? Naturally. What'd you fry them in? Uh, we ran out of the safflower seed oil, but I found a bottle of peanut oil on the shelf. Don't worry, it's not hydrogenated. Is that the cold pressed stuff or the junk Hilda bought by mistake? <laughs> yes, man, yes. Hi. Good morning, Walter. Hi, Walter. What brings you here? Have some breakfast, man. What are you having? And soy and wheat germ pancakes, organic guava nectar, Calcium lactate and tomato juice and garbanzo omelets sprinkled with smoked yeast. Join us? No, thanks. Mm. Sounds great, though. Mm. Uh, I brought something to show you. Could I have some of the guys help me? Is it better, sure. man? It's better. Come on. Borders. Put it in the middle of the room. When did you do this, Walter? Last night. It doesn't take me very long. I should say not. Well, let's see it, man. I can't believe it. I'm honored to know this man. Do you think it's nice? Hey, she's beautiful. Do you think it's nice in a murdered man? Oh, I don't know, Walter. It's impossible to choose. They're both great. Walter, I'm deeply moved. Show my appreciation. I'm going to give a party tonight at the Yellow Door. In your honor. And I shall compose a poem. of amidextrous apathy. Necrophiles may dance upon the placemats in an orgy of togetherness. The highway of life cuts sharply through the shady ghettos and the ivy-covered tombs, and laughter rings from every time capsule in the star-spangled firmament. And in the deep freeze, it is the children's hour, and no one knows that Duncan is murdered. 
and no one knows that Walter Paisley is born. Duncan knows, Tuesday Sunrise knows, alley cats and garbage cans and steaming pavements and you and I and the nude descending the staircase and all such things with so we know that Walter Paisley is born. Ring rubber bells, beat cotton gongs, strike silken cymbals, play leathern flutes, the cats and cans, and you and I, and all such things with souls. We shall hear, Walter Paisley is born, and the souls become flesh. Walter Paisley is born. <laughs> Marvelous, darling, marvelous. Man, like that was the greatest gas I ever heard. Crazy, what did he say? Didn't you hear him? No, man, I'm too far out. <laughs> Maxwell, that was magnificent. I feel so elegant. Walter deserved every word of it. it makes me so glad I'm aware. <sighs> did you hear what he said? That's all. All about me. It's true, isn't it? Every word. You better hold off on the bubbly, artist. Yeah, why? You might talk too much. <laughs> what would I say? Most anything I expect. Are you two trying to ignore the rest of us? Oh, not me, Maxwell. I wouldn't ignore you. I know what it is to be ignored. Tell us what you're going to do next, Walter. I'm going to make the most wonderful, wildest, wickiest things you've ever seen. I'm going to make big statues and little statues, tall statues and short statues. I'm going to make statues of nobodies and statues of famous people, statues of actors and, and poets. And people who sell things on television. And a statue of a mayor. And some opera singers and their intimate friends. And everybody will say, Walter, let me shake your hand. It's been a real pleasure to have known you. <laughs> Alley cats and garbage cans, they know that Walter Paisley is born. Ring rubber bells. Beat cotton gowns, strike silken cymbals, play leather flutes. <laughs> Tell us what you're gonna do next, Walter. I'm gonna make big statues, little statues, movie stars and poets, and guys who sell things on television. And the mayor and some opera singers. What you're gonna do next, Walter? What am I gonna do next? What am I gonna do next? I gotta do something before they forget. I know what it's like to be ignored. Your hope of bumming a ride on the omnibus of art. Huh? What'd you say? What well, is not creation is graham crackers. Let them all crumble to feed the creator. Now, oh, bait it. You must be nuts. Just wait till you see this. Extra, extra, horrible murder in furniture factory. Read about the man who got cut in half. Extra, extra. Police can only find part of it. Leonard. What's the matter, Leonard? 
You made a bust. Yeah, isn't it wonderful? What's the matter, Leonard? Put it down, Walter, please. Walter. Walter, listen to me carefully. I don't want you to make any more statues. Do you understand? No more statues. Well, why not? I, I gotta make statues, Leonard. You heard Brock, they want me to make them. And if I stop making them, I'll, I'll just be a busboy again. Brock, he's behind all of this with his stupid, bitter poetry. Listen, you've got to stop and right away. I'm beginning to feel responsible. Why? Well, what did you do? Never mind. Walter, I've decided to have that show for you, right away. Yes. When Carla comes, we'll have her work up some nice invitations. We'll have them printed up. We'll invite the critics and the art collectors. We'll tell them. Well, I don't see why we can't go. Mr. Leonard DeSantis is afraid to have you come. You who buy his coffee that lure his tourists. You are the heart and soul and meat of the yellow door. He slighted you. Did you get an invitation? I did not. But I'm going anyway. Not to drink his champagne, but to see Walter's triumph. After that, we go no more. Hi, Maxwell. I won't say good luck, Walter. Why not? It would imply you could not succeed on your ability alone. You look so handsome. I do. So do you. <laughs> I mean, you look so pretty. Oh, thank you. Are you ready? Oh, we've got plenty of time. I know, but I, I wanted to talk to you. Okay, we can go now if you like. Bye. Later, man, later. Swing. Man, why do you suppose Walter wants to get her alone? Do you suppose he could be physically attracted to her? No, man, he ain't the type. He don't get enough vitamin E. Maxwell gave him a bottle of wheat germ oil once. Maybe he just started taking it. What did you want to talk to me about, Walter? Well, uh, what kind of people do you like, Carla? Oh, thinking people. Artistic people, I guess. You think I'm artistic? Of course I do. That means you like me. I like you very much, Walter. I, I, I thought you did on account of how you kissed me the other night. Oh, that was for your sculptor of the girl. You're nude in the chair. Carla, uh, uh, I've been alone for a long time, and, and I know you've been alone, because you never seem to go out with anybody, even though Leonard's always asking you to go out with him, and I just... What are you trying to say? Oh. Carla? I, I, I don't want to make statues anymore. I, I want to get married to you. How long have you been thinking about this, Walter? Oh, for, for a long time. Ever since you first came to work at the club. You were the only one who was ever nice to me. I didn't know you loved me until you kissed me. Walter, I do like you. And I did kiss you. But that was because of your work. There's more to being in love with someone than just that. You mean you don't love me? I'm afraid that's what I mean. But... But you gotta love me. Why do you think I made that statue of Alice? Walter, I'm sorry, but You I... just can't be sorry. I want to marry you. Now calm down, Walter, and let's go in there and... And then, maybe when the show's over, we can talk about it. Well, tomorrow. I don't want to talk about it. I get it. I see the whole thing now. Nobody knows that Walter Paisley is born. Carla. Will you do one favor for me? Just about anything, Walter. Would you let me make a statue of you? Would you really like to? That'd make me very happy. Okay. Tonight. 
I'll make a statue of you tonight. Okay? Come on. artists about, but no craftsmen. This man knows his anatomy. I'd give 1500 for this. After you read my review, it'll probably cost you 5000 <laughs> So what's the trouble? Why should you be so depressed? Have you heard the things they're saying? You can make 25000 on these pieces alone. I thought you put money down. I do, but 25000 Leave me alone. Come to make this scene. Want some cappuccino, man? We got the bread. We're not open for business. This is an art exhibit. No bumps. Get out. Uh, that art is about man, and he's sober. Yeah, well, that's his problem. Man. All right, man. All right, we'll wait outside. Yeah, you wait outside. in his hands that he might mold them. Walter, you stay away from me. Don't you see, Carla? I made them immortal. Don't you see? I can do the same for you. down the street. Walter, go home. 
Where is he? he would have called it Hanging Man. His greatest work. So there you have it, group. A bucket of blood. Now, what did you think? Should that go in the cauldron of shame or not? Personally, I say not. That was very enjoyable. Although it raises all sorts of questions. What about the owner of the cafe who decides to put on an exhibition despite knowing or at least suspecting what's going on? The almighty dollar, I believe, you know, influenced his thought. Anyway, and the artist, well, I guess, Smolt, is it a, is it a treatise on fame? Obsession? Uh, there's, a, there's a lot to be read into. What is essentially, probably? Just a very quickly written script, because it was the Roger Corman, Corman uh, film. Yes. Was it a film? Yes, it was a film. <laughs> One thing I've noticed, though, that doesn't seem very realistic, shall we say, is if I say I'm going to throw a party for someone and I will compose a poem in their honour, they don't seem very excited. Not as excited as they did in the film. Obviously, it's not true to life. Obviously, people just don't like poems. That's, that's the only explanation. Mm. If you have another explanation, though, feel free to let me know. You can either email me or you can leave a comment below. <laughs> we'll be back in two weeks with another fantastic film. Well, with a film anyway. So until then, Malice fans, well, do whatever you want, I don't care. Ha <laughs> ha.